actually engineering the uh is that you or is that me it's it's me i don't know it just does that there we go sorry man so in the meantime i here in vietnam it's uh quite scarce to get like uh exported products like especially american products and here i've oh, really? got i've got prime <laughs> and my review on this is it's not worth it later okay. no, no i wasn't looking at you know, I was, I was, see that's the thing see now i look at you here and i'm not looking at the camera this whole thing is like Arr. i should just put it back on this tripod and just slide my computer screen here i think that would just so, so you can't see me what's up guys it's kels here the homie ashwa <laughs> and we're here for film foo uh you can visit my socials get on my instagram at aswa underscore hand you can go visit my website at aswahan.com if you're cinephiles like us and you love movies, you love cinema, you love action, you love all types of movie news, come here, go down the link in the description, hit the subscribe button, okay? Follow Ashwa on his channel, follow me on Dudes Brewing, and stay up to date on all the latest happenings for all the film and TV things that are coming your way. Uh, all right. What a, what a That's sandwich. ridiculous. I can't figure it out, but whatever. Yeah, I'll, it's all good. Later. Anyway, it's all part of the episode. This is all planned, by the way. Exactly. We were just trying yeah. to frustrate you guys. <laughs> this is all planned. It's an it's endurance shot. It's film foo. It's all part of the Zach, it's all part of the training. It's a yeah. film foo. Yeah. Exactly. Hey, how was that? Hey, what does that say on your necklace? Uh, Kelvin does K L, yeah. So it's K L V N. Oh, okay. It's 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 flipped on my end. Oh, right now. Okay. How about now? K L V N. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. it's kind of like the Beyond. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Beyond and, B and, uh, Y and D. The yes, yes. So <laughs> how 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 have things been? Everything's been good, man. Just keeping busy and um it's getting cold down on this cold? side. Oh, it's winter, yeah. right? Yeah, it's winter here. How's this winter guys, compared to how's the how's winter uh, compared to last year? Because I heard last year's winter it, was not very wintry. No, it's colder this year. Much colder. Mm. Yeah. So we were in Queenstown right now. It'd be mm. Snowville. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's what I missed last year because we didn't get much snow and I was hoping we, we would get a bit more snow on those mountains. But unfortunately. Uh, yeah. yeah. We got some, but not a lot. You know, was, yeah. Yeah. But do you get any mountains yeah. in, um? is it is it is it Wellington? No. You're in? Uh, yeah, Taupo. Uh, on the North Island. Okay. So Lake Ta Lake Taupo, that's like maybe three hours drive from Auckland. Right, but in but in Auckland, do you see any mountains around there? Yeah, no, we have mountains. We got the Waitakere Ranges. 
Okay. So that's a mountain range over there. And then we've got um yeah, and that's that's all along the coast and stuff. So it's big forestry areas and then it leads to um another set of mountains that's all along the coastline. So it just goes all the way up to North uh, Island, like on the coast. Yeah. And they call it and the White Cacri Ranges. And how are those mountains like compared to the ones in Queenstown? They're not well, they're not as big as the one in Queenstown. I think okay. the the mountains on the South Island, I think, are like the second biggest in the world or something. So what's Maybe first? Something like that. I don't. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I would have. We have to check online on on the Google's. Ah. Uh, have to check on the Google. The space. The space Alps. Maybe. I could. I could. I could check right now. I don't know what Spit, Switzerland. Tallest mountains. Yeah, in the world. Uh, well, where is uh, Mount Everest? Isn't that like? Yes, yeah, Everest. Yeah, so but where's that? Everest is. Where is Everest located? Is that in Nepal? It's in America. No, no, it's definitely not. <laughs> but it's, it's every... such a European, such a European name, though. So it's like. So everything Everest big is... comes from the U.S. Yeah, so it's it's technically Tibet. Oh, it is. Okay. It's Tibet. Tibet. Shout but out like, to Tibet. You know, it's on the it's on the boundary of Tibet and like in not yeah the boundary of Tibet and China and Nepal. Mm. Like so, it's sort of like on like three different like boundaries. Okay. Well, today's episode has been very educational. For those of you who didn't know where Everest was located. <laughs> <laughs> the mountain so, yeah. ranges and stuff. So yeah. So oh. wait, so you're looking forward to um Fury Road. Fur- Furiosa. Furiosa, the sequel. Yeah, yeah. Fury it's still Fury Road. A, it's still the same road. It's a Mad Max saga. Curious, uh, yeah. I'm mad myself. You know, we, when we talked about it last time, I thought honestly, I thought George Miller passed away. What? No. I thought he was. I thought he was dead, dude. So that's why I was like, when you were like, "Oh, you are you excited for years?" I was like, "Oh, I don't know, man," because I heard uh, George Miller like worked on it, but I someone passed away recently, and I had him mixed up with George Miller. Ah, uh, it, it's the guy who played Immortan Joe. The the villain in Fury Road. Ah. Yeah, he, yeah, he passed away. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I, I thought George Miller wasn't really involved. And I was like, oh, I don't know. But um Yeah. And Mel yeah. Gibson's still alive, so Yeah. They should bring Mel back, but they, they asked George Miller in an interview recently about like, yeah. hey, do you think like you know, and he was just like, I never I never really thought about it. Um, Which is weird, right? Because I would have thought he would have had some sort of outline, so. right? I, yeah, you would think so. Like, I would, you know, just to connect the IPs, mm. I would, you know, it just gives more credence to the previous work if you can include include it and in, somehow incorporate it into the new thing. Um, yeah. But uh, but I, I think technically... Uh, Mel Gibson was old in Mad Max um, Beyond Thunderdome, where they tried mm. to make him look aged or something. Or oh yeah, yeah, there was a yeah, it's like a, there's like a time shift or time jump. Yeah, in... but they they still could have him included or whatever. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, roughed up old hag, you know. Yeah, he's he's even yeah, and more also mad. It had... Yeah, and also it helps Mel. Mel's Mel's a great actor, man. Like, yeah. you know, so I, yeah. I would try to get him involved. Yeah, but maybe he's his good, financiers, I have no idea. Well, he's a good director yeah. as well. I, I like. Yeah, no, his Mel's great actor, great director. Yeah. Um, birthday is very close to mine. It's Capricorn. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah, he's a Jan- January baby like me. He, he, yeah. yeah, man. But it seemed like he, his I've career always... like went on a nosedive after that incident, right? When 
Yeah, and so. and the the girl set him up, like you know she just yeah. wanted to, like to record him, like throwing a fit essentially. You know, but wasn't he um, like, wasn't he intoxicated? And, and then he started to say those anti-Semitic slurs to the police. Uh, I think during that incident he might have been intoxicated. I think so. Yeah. But I know the argument with the girl, she got him purposely riled up, and then she just recorded him on the phone being riled up, mm. and then released it to the media. Okay. You know, and but this is why. Um, on our on my podcast on dudes brewing that's why initially we were, we were talking about um relationship dynamics like modern dating um mm-hmm. between men and women because we're trying to like teach men to be uh more um like um i said i guess the term ladies would use is emotionally intelligent <laughs> mm-hmm. but it's it's being able to feel your emotions but you know well obviously everybody has emotions but it's important for men to regulate it because men are naturally physical because we have Mm. 17 times the testosterone than um, ladies do. So a lot of times in a domestic dispute between like a lady and a guy, ladies defend themselves mentally. So they're very mentally aggressive. So they'll say something like verbally or they'll poke at you mentally. And men generally don't know how to defend against that in a lot, in, in certain cases, depending on, your home environment men know how to defend themselves against other men which is to physically staunch up and go hey if you cross this line it's on you know so it's like Mm. a physical thing but you can't do that with a lady so ladies are mentally aggressive men feel like mentally abused but they don't know how to like they don't know how to like uh, deal with it and just go oh wait she's this is just how she she's trying to express herself but she's doing it by trying to get an emotional reaction out of you Mm. so you got to be able to like have a strong solid frame you can't be masculine and emotional you can't Mm. do both at the same time i tell men um men plus emotions equal jail right (laughs) so like you cannot be a big dude and crying at the same time now you're a big dude crying and punching a wall and by the time Mm. the police show up you don't have any time to explain anything going, well, she told me, you know, I'm not a man and, and she slept my, my, my cousin or she cheated on me. You don't have time to explain any, any of that. So, yeah. so yeah. So we were talking about modern dating initially on dudes brewing and stuff, but mm-hmm. it's important for men to know these things. Cause that's what happened. He got caught like being emotional. And so he went off on the phone and went on a tirade and you know, as you know, people can record. It's more prevalent now because everyone's got cell phones. But I think when when it happened to Mel, it he, I think he definitely didn't see that coming. So, right. yeah, yeah. I it's, mean, it's the, no, yeah, but yeah. but we also saw that with Johnny Depp and um, what's the other girl's name? Yeah, Amber Heard. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amber Heard. But it, it, but it's weird yeah. how how like I do side with more on. Depth side, but it's weird how he recorded everything, like every conversation. I no, think it's a you toxic. Ha- you should, yeah. But you should, as a man, I know, I know. you should. But I think it's a weird yeah, because like, already for him to do that. That is already that's yeah, a weird yeah. Every well, if it gets to that point, the relationship's yeah. over. Mm. It's it's over once you have to start recording things. So yeah. that should have been like the sign to leave. But Johnny, um, his dating history, uh, mm. which. You know, I'm not heavily focused on, but I do know bits and pieces of it. I know every time he gets with a new girl, he's head mm. over heels for her. All right. So he, when he was dating Winona Ryder, he got Winona tattooed on his arm. He's very, very Disney type dude. Not, not in a Jack Sparrow type way, but more like he's a romantic. So he yeah. goes like, he goes into pedestalizing like every lady that he meets and not realizing they also poop like you. Okay. Mm-hmm. They're humans. They poop, you know. Yeah. I I I used to I used to be that way. I used to be like a very like, hey, I got you roses and flowers, and my my friends would be like, dude, she farts. Relax, okay. Just like she's a human, you know. Right, right. She will break your heart at some point. <laughs> yeah, but so, especially when you're in that honeymoon phase, and you got 
butterflies, you know, you can't think straight. And, you You're know. in love with the idea. Yeah. You're in love with the idea. But I tell people, people show you who they are. They always show you who, you, who they are. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times we still try to make up a story based on what we think they, they what we want them to be. Mm. So it's um, it's more like we fight it. We're fighting with our perception rather than looking at the actual perspective, because the perspective is actually showing us who they are. But the perception is what we. It's our ego. Mm. Perception is our ego. It's like what we were like. No, like it can be that way with like old friends, like old friends you might have worked with at one point, and you see something more in them, and like you want to help them, you try to offer to help them. And it's because you see, you see more for them, but if they don't see it themselves, then you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot, investing and trying to pull somebody, trying to make somebody more of something that they actually can't see themselves. So they have, it has to come from them. They yeah. have to be able to go, okay, I think I can, I can do this, you know, right. otherwise you'll end up sinking your boat while trying to pull somebody else on your boat. That actually mm. doesn't want to be on the boat because they have no idea what they're doing. Mm. They have no yeah. sense of direction, but you you see it for them. Um, like you're creative as a director, so you have you have you have a very strong perception on things. You see things um, in others that they may not initially see, right? And you're able to formulate ideas and paint a picture. Where some people they have a hard time painting a picture at all. If they even know, have a direction for what they want to compose, how to make right. a composite out of something. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's that's interesting. Very yeah. interesting. Very philosophical. Um, yeah. Yeah. So poor poor Mel. Mel just got Mel got caught off guard. He got uh badly caught off guard. And then like, yeah, if I was his old director friends and stuff, like I would. I would try to look out for him. I don't know, but I, who knows? Who knows? Everyone's situation is different. That's Dealing true. Dealing with answers. So. By the way, we've got 10 minutes. Um. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so what's next? Uh, shout oh, out, um, so have you watched any anything lately? Any films? Any new shows? Shows? New, new films? New shows? Um, I've been catching reviews of like things. Mm -hmm. uh, more so than um, being able to watch a full show and things. So, you know, I'll be I'll catch something on Film Threat, you know, or okay. um, Nerdrotic. I'll catch something from those guys. They'll be reviewing like a trailer that they've seen for, you know, some some film or sh shows that came out. What was something recent that they they reviewed? I'm trying to think of something. Furiosa. Because I know they they did. Yeah, they did talk about Furiosa, yeah. and there was a huge debate around whether the lead actress was. Um, a girl boss or was she actually yeah. like an earned like um hero like she just earned it mm. out of her own humanity and, but they um, had good stuff to say about it and her character yeah for the, yeah, for the most part yeah. yeah they had a lot of good things to say yeah but, but i find I alan's there's one... alan's review to be a bit strange you know the asian dude like because yeah, you're yeah, saying because yeah, yeah, yeah. you're saying fury road was boring for him and same with fury really? so i'm like boring really like i don't know maybe oh. he's not an action dude but maybe yeah. maybe because fury road was constant action right and i yeah. don't know maybe that's just not his thing but uh yeah, yeah maybe he, so. he was just saying it, it got kind of boring furiosa and that's the same problem he had with fury road i'm like dude are you a man or <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because you know, really, men like men like action. We're, we're yeah, physical, man. especially good action. Like Fury was, was one of the yeah. best action films I've seen in a while. Like, especially when yeah, a lot yeah. of it was done practically. Yeah, mm. I um, I don't. I think maybe I don't know. I I can't make excuses for him, but maybe it's been so many films in the desert between that and Dune. It was just maybe. more of a. I, and I think that was his his critique. He was saying about the landscape mm -hmm. was the issue when he was talking about um, Fury Road and Furiosa. He was just saying, when you look at um, Dune, he said there's a lot more eye candy 
in the background of the desert that kind of you say it kind of brings the world more to life and i think that's that was if i'm not mistaken that was his critique and he was just saying mad max is very much just it is just desert you know but um but as far as like the the car the car candy the car things mm-hmm. that were going on in the film i think their only critique was um as far as like the girl boss thing was just um something with her arm with um, yeah yeah with her putting her arm together and coming up with the device it just made it seem like it she just magically figured it out rather than it actually being like mm you know, a real struggle to try to, you know, unless you're a scientist and you're known for like engineering, you know, uh, uh, you know, some type of mechanic arm. So, but, but they maybe, were outside of that. But maybe there's something that you just, I mean, you don't want to, maybe George Miller didn't want to dive too much or too much into detail when it came to the functioning or, or putting that together. Cause, cause I had, cause I have a yeah. friend who had this similar argument with you know the yeah. first spider-man with toby Maguire, because he was saying oh yeah. you know because because he, he started off with this like kind of you know track suit kind of you know spidey suit and then next thing you see him in this really cool spandex like made spider-man suit and he's like oh you know how can he make such an advance you know like costume you know from 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 something super amateur uh, like amateur to something really well made like i wanted to see the whole process and i was like no but i think in a storytelling standpoint you could cut that because the viewer will already kind of assume like yeah yeah and and it's marvel it's marvel it's meant to be a bit fantastical so Mm. you're you're willing to like accept certain things because it's fantastical like you're not gonna need to see how loki i don't know uh pull some sort of like magic um gas out of his hand and how does the molecules actually come together like it's fantastical type stuff you know so it's like yeah you know it's not something that needs to be down to a science but i I think in films where they try to exhibit realism i think that's the only thing people do want to kind of see like especially i think the reason also potentially that that was a critique with furiosa was because um, there's been so many movies now that have been just female led and they've just got a MacGuffin special mm. ring and then they're just all powerful where they haven't ha- actually earned it. I think they feel like it's not enough female leads, probably perhaps that it would be a unique thing to see for once that sh- how she came up with that contraption to go, she's earned the right to kick ass you know but then again you know we would have to see the film because i'm just going by what they're saying but yeah. but i think for something yeah, like fury road or furiosa there is some yeah. it's not it's not so grounded in reality i there is some fantastic yeah, elements there's some fantastical to, it. to it yeah 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 like i understand if it was like the dark knight you know christopher nolan's batman where things are more grounded yeah. in reality then sure you would want to see how things are made and yeah but but yeah have to see the film and and i'll see yeah 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 uh, definitely and you gotta give a give your review give us yeah. give us your feedback and let us know what you think you know yeah because it's coming out here on friday so yeah so we'll see yeah. but i think it's yeah, already you out gotta, um, yeah i think as as us with us doing our podcast and you being a director me being an actor um we should just start building connection with like the local theaters man and just like just tell them like look we're gonna review films and we're gonna shout you guys out you know? yeah could be That'd a be thing cool. could be a thing could be could be yeah, yeah. but uh yeah Anything else you, you you've checked out other than reviews or yeah yeah I'm trying I'm trying to think what was off the top of my head um outside of that they've uh, I'm glad uh, Chris Gore is back because I I I thought I saw that he had a stroke and then I wasn't quite sure about it oh, from Chris some Gore threat. left and came back I thought he was always there no he left for about like. He he was off for like three weeks from Film Threat. Oh, really? Okay. And, and nobody really knew what happened. And I, I thought mm. I saw something on social media 
but I wasn't quite sure. And then, yeah, I found out he had a stroke like mm. um, at a cinema con in Las Vegas. He had a stroke. Well, it looks yeah. like he's, he a, he's like uh, a, looks like he's okay. He had now. a mini stroke. Yeah, yeah, he's okay now. So he his words started slurring. They were all hanging out at CinemaCon. I think he was doing something with um, Gary from Neurotic, and his words just started slurring. And yeah, he couldn't quite get mm. himself together. But I think he's all good now. Yeah. So okay. yeah, I, I sent him some love in the in the inbox on the in the Instagrams. Is that sort of stuff? So so have you been to yeah. CinemaCon before? um no no i, I want to go i've only been to comic-con so okay. i went to comic-con in um 2019 and that was for adult swim cartoon network because of me voicing cartoons and stuff ah. with, my, with my homie rakeem yeah so what's the vibe like yeah what's the it's a good how's it like? comic-con's yeah. vibe well, most of the cons are pretty good Con, it's a, you know it's mm. a festival so like yeah, yeah they've got different areas set up like so They've got massive food and drink stands over this way. Different mm. comic book companies have their own booths. Different movie um, companies, studios have their own setups. Uh, smaller independent productions can get their own booths and set up. And yeah, and people do cosplay and things like that. If you got a movie or something you're trying to sell, you can kind of go there and network oh. with people, pass them your movie you know that type of thing so it's, it's a good vibe it's all arts it's just all artists like nerds all together you know just vibing out so yeah mm. man we have yeah, less so than I, a I, minute I, just to let you know oh, sorry oh wow it's so quick yeah um, let's do one more yeah, and man. then and yeah. then yeah well we will we will be back oh what's that called uh, yes. intermission intermission yeah slight intermission it? exactly <laughs> we'll have some yeah I'll 10 put, minutes I'll put later yeah exactly yeah. exactly 10 minutes later I love that stuff <laughs> yeah. here we are back yes back, back in the business business yeah right. so we're talking about stuff we watched oh yeah I watched yes. um, Go Godzilla Minus One which uh... oh you did I was very disappointed, I have to say. Because um, everyone was saying how good it was. It was the best film of last year and blah, 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 blah. I don't know if it's because people are saying it. They're saying, I don't know why, because it's, you know, it's a Japanese film. Maybe they give it a, you know, they're a bit more lenient on foreign yeah. films. But uh, no, I didn't like it. I think it was okay, but not, not, not what, what yeah. Was what it was boasted about yeah yeah the yeah. high praise it was, it was okay it's okay the, the the acting wasn't great as well i mean it the acting was like as the these actors were playing knowing that they were playing in some sort of manga movie kind of thing so their their oh. actions were a bit exaggerated and oh gosh yeah, yeah i don't know I felt it was because it's on like green that. screen, yeah. No, like a lot of it was it was very well done. The special effects. Um, oh yeah, yeah. But the atmosphere, like being on a green screen set, I think the actors might have thought. I don't. The I don't think it was that. I think it was just the characters, just how they were, how they acted, and also their costume. Like their wardrobe was kind of a bit like, kind of like caricatures of, of. Yeah, like like characters that you see in manga cartoons, you know, you mm. have like, you know, like the professor who has like, you know, he's, he's, he's got a typical, you know, Glasses. professor look like. No, but that's just an example. Yeah. But yeah, but that's how the characters were perceived. And yeah, uh, I, just, I don't know. So it was too on the nose, like of like a token. I it felt was like it just. Like maybe some people didn't see it that like the way, train but... conductor looked too much like a train conductor. It was just sort of some like that, and like it, like even the the main actor, he, he, I don't think he was a good actor. I like like because there were like very emotional, sentimental moments, which I feel he was trying to force, and I'm just like, 
where's that tear? Like, I don't see that tear. <laughs> oh, one sec, one sec. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, well, uh, Oshawa is gone. Um, yeah, go. I'm just going to tell you guys, buy more chicken nuggets. Uh, French fry. Oh, he's back. All right. <laughs> I'm back. I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so it wasn't, wasn't great. I was a bit disappointed. Uh, yeah, what can you hear me? Yeah, I think my camera. Oh, there it is. Yeah, my camera. Yeah. Uh, but on a side note, I was, um, I was, what's that? Huh? Where's it? Over there. Yeah. I watched a pretty cool show on Netflix called The Eight Show. It's a Korean uh, series, uh, eight episodes. Um, yeah. It's like Squid Game, but it's not Squid Game. But it's kind of, it's got that same kind of vibe. But it's really cool. It's more psychological. And yeah, yeah it's like these eight contestants who are stuck in this uh, room. It's all about hierarchy and, you know, it's also... It's, yeah, there are layers within this series. Yeah, it's just, you know, how the government suppresses people. Like, it's, it's yeah. So it's, it's really cool. It's about these eight contestants in this massive space. And it goes by their number. So so the characters' names so it's like are... like a Hunger Games. Something like that. But I think it's, it's quite creative. Like, so you have level eight. So they just call him... So they call her eight, seven... Six, five, four, three, two, one. So one is like the lowest. So he's on the first floor. Eight is on the top floor. And then the eight is um has the privilege, right? And and you kind of see how how she kind of um suppresses everyone that's beneath her and how yes, yeah, it's, it's really cool. Like I think you should check it out. It was, it, like it was released a few days ago. But yeah, eight episodes and yeah, it's a bit like Squid Game. I think it's a bit more clever, I'd say. More um, yeah. play, plays with the mind. But yeah, the eight show. It's uh so much content, man. Yeah, it's from a it's from a Korean webtoon series. So oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So check yeah, it out. Yeah, they're um they're buying they're buying most of their films on Netflix and some of the other streaming services they're buying a lot for international markets mm. um, and just because i think right now in america i think they don't they don't quite know what type of direction they want to go with a lot of the film and tv because they were trying to push um a lot of the dei esg mm. type stuff the diversity equity inclusion stuff and a lot of shows have bombed like there's this huge yeah. controversy around uh, doctor who Oh yeah, yeah. It's the workers the of the yeah. Mall. I haven't they, seen they it, but yeah. I haven't seen it, but I've seen like the the thing is with these shows that that they're failing at is they're showing before they even talk about what the show is going to be about, they talk about the diversity first. So mm. the the headline is um, first openly gay Doctor Who who's also African and African right. English. And yeah. it, it's just, con it's confusing of like, who is your target audience here? Like, who are you trying to target to watch your show? Because the queer community has always been around in Western countries, but they've always been niche. They're a niche community. Mm. It's not the entire of the Western world. So it's like, you're what, 9% or so? Yeah. So yeah. your average viewer is going to be male, probably straight, and then families for the most part. But they are right. the loudest, though, even though they are the nine percent. I don't think. I actually don't think they're the loudest. I think the industry has platformed some of them in positions of power to complain and be mm. loudest. Mm. So I think, um, like in LA. The film and TV industry is made, run majorly by the people who started it, which is the Jewish community. And they platform a lot of people now because of DEI. They're tokenizing mm. people in positions of power now where they mm. get to speak. And it sounds like, oh, my God, it's the community complaining. And it's not the community. Yeah, it's, it's just not. a select few that they put in positions of, of power. 
and they put these, they're associated with like a nonprofit. And so it's just a spokesperson from the nonprofit speaking, but they're inflating and exaggerating the impact of said community as far as like what the how much they represent on a societal scale. They're very small. It was like mm. I think five percent, maybe, if anything, out of a mm. of a hundred. So that's what's going on right now. And they've tried socially engineering the uh is that you or is that me? It's it's me. It- I don't know. It just does that. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's from the iPhone. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That's what it is. It's iPhone. Yeah. Because I was like, I was like, okay, it's not showing up on my Zoom. Yeah, yeah. it's the iPhone um, update. Yeah, man. Um, but yeah, I, I they um the industry has tried to since Me Too, they put a lot of ladies in power. And then they've wanted to make a focus on LGBTQ for some reason, which no Mm. one really quite knows why they shifted the direction towards that. It's not like it's an organic type thing that happened. It's not like there was a, there's not, there was a queer slave trade. Yeah. (laughs) And then the queer slaves got freed. And then we're like, yes, we have to put them in movies. There was no struggle. There was no anything. It was just need to happen. And then it went from woman in power to going, okay, now queer, and then okay, now trans. And people are like, okay, but like, but why? Like they just cool wanna they, they, they just want to destroy America, make them softies. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's the people at the top. Yeah. I, I honestly think it's the people at the top that control the industry. I think they're hell-bent on splitting all minority groups into little silos and have them fighting it's an oppression olympics essentially it's hunger games to be included inclusion but why are they pushing this why are they pushing this and why are there so many coming out and you know why i think it's the vaccine no just kidding (laughs) (laughs) you're silly (laughs) i think they're pushing it i think they're pushing it because it keeps their families that can that built the industry it keeps them in a position of power everyone's Mm. fighting to be seen they're not they're not pushing jewish inclusion and the reason why they're not pushing jewish inclusion is because they control the industry they Mm. already platform all of their actors yeah so they got everyone else in an oppression olympics fighting to be seen and they get to subsidize and monetize whether you get to be seen that's my thought process on it, is that it's been intentionally done to keep people in a space where we're all fighting and they're just like, okay, well, cool. Yeah. Let, there was a police shooting that happened this year. Let's make a new African lead in a movie and let's just, let's throw them a bone. And then we'll just like, we pay the lobby. We, we lobby in, in politics. So we'll just, we'll keep lobbying and, and keeping control of the government and keeping control of certain positions of power. But, you know, we'll occasionally have them outraged about something yearly and we'll just put them in a film. It just looks like, like it's another form of tokenization. But the thing is, is that social media is the buffer between that. Mm. Because I think in the eighties, they used to be able to socially engineer a lot more. They would do a bunch of war films about, you know, Afghanistan, Russia, there's a lot of cold war films. They used right. to be able to do that, you know, who raw everybody up into a whole lot of like American um, patriotism type things. And so I think they've had a lot of hubris within them because they've had so much control of television. They get to tell a vision that they wanted. And now mm-hmm. social media is a buffer between people liking that vision and going, you know what? I actually can't relate to this. Like, no, why are you guys not? Making- and the thing is, yeah. I don't think that people on top actually believe in it either. I, I think they're just pushing it. Because when it comes to even releasing films from the US to China, they yeah. don't show that stuff, knowing that the Chinese government is going to reject it, right? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. it's, <laughs> you know. They cut it out. So, yeah, they, they, yeah. Know, they, know it, they know it doesn't work. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's not socially acceptable. But mm. they've been purposely... Between the film industry and it looks like the music industry, they've been 
purposely pushing nihilism on the mm. world. I don't know if you know what nihilism is. No. Nihilism is um, the idea that nothing else matters. All right. Live the moment. It's about me. Do as I want. You know, live as I want. Mm. It's about my pride. So they're pushing these things where it doesn't work in Eastern cultures because Eastern cultures, they care about community and family more than right. individual. Western cultures is more about individual. And so they screw each other over in business because it's about the individual. The individual is trying to make themselves more prominent or right. being seen rather than common unity, rather than seeing we all have a collective goal. Let's all help each other out. Let's all be an equitable planet, make cool things to help advance our society. So I think I think that's the 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 that's the only pattern that I see that makes sense because there's no other reason to be targeting children with saying trans kids can be kids and people are like where did this come from like what what do you mean trans kids like they they're born there's no there's no kid that says I'm trans unless without an adult influence Yeah but then there's some Parents that are really that are pushing the kids, you know. Yeah, confusing the, them at the a parent, very young age, but also doing yeah. those the surgery as well, right? What's it called? That you know, where they yeah, chop the, the little the, thingies off and. Well, they've always yeah. they've always had that, but it's it, I don't I wouldn't even say it's parents. It's it's mm-hmm. more so moms mm-hmm. and maybe some queer pe- people that might have children. But it's definitely, it's more so moms. And the reason for is women are very easy to target for social inclusion because women are very agreeable because they're not known to physically disagree with something. So they're more so punked into going, oh, yeah, that would be mean, guys. That would be mean. And men are like, no, but that's logically the truth. Like, And we're willing to fight for it because we're men. We're like, we're not going to have them, like during COVID, yeah. we're not going to have them shut down our shop. Like, you know, I need yeah. to keep my business and my family going, but women are going, but what about everyone else? You know, so it, it's, they're, women are easy to manipulate. This is why they target mm. women in marketing from right. a commercial point. They target women because women care so much to be included. Men don't care to be included. Yeah. We can be an individual on our own and just go our own path. But ladies are completely different. So that's why psychologically marketing is always focusing on ladies. Because they're more so emotional. I, they go for more emotion, right? They're drawn to it. Yeah. That's why they make great mothers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They make so, great mothers and sometimes can be questionable leaders. Not to say they can't be leaders, but mm. they're more prone to doing things because it sounds socially nice but it's not logical. Right. Yeah. So socialism will completely take over if they get involved, but it'll collapse the civilization because they're not thinking from a logical point of view. Hmm. So anytime you run on emotions, it, it, it gets messy. So it does. One, just one second. I just have to take my kid to to class in five oh, minutes. Okay. Yeah. Just, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, but that's, yeah. that's, that's okay. We can we can do a quick quick uh, uh yeah. W- w- yeah one more one more topic and then yeah. So uh, call it a day. what else? What else has been happening? Oh, I sent you a, a few movie reviews uh, from um the the homie Fomento. Oh yeah. You, yeah. Um, yeah, I saw a f- yeah. few links you sent. I haven't come around to check. I think I did check one of them, but not f- but not the full thing. But yeah, I'll definitely it's come so around good. to check it out. Yeah, because it just yeah. points out these little nuances that sometimes we may not catch as the viewer, and we're just like, mm. "Wait, story that I did." That's we felt something was missing, but couldn't quite pinpoint where it mm. went left. And I think I think it's super helpful for storytellers, like in general, mm. to be able to compose like your ideas and going wait for the act of my film. This needs to be established first to get the 
people hooked. Mm. Cause I, I love, I love um, in film, I love directors that are very visual and have a visual style to them. Right. And it's easy to get caught up in that. And then you lose the story. For sure. With it, you know, and it's more. Michael I think Bay. It's more, yeah. No, it's a, it's a lot. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. Like I love Paul W. S. Anderson visually. Oh, but he sorry, doesn't which one, to sorry. Which one's he? Because I get one who did, I get mixed up with the the one who yeah, did uh, yeah. Event Horizon. Yeah, the one who did Event, okay. Event Horizon. Okay. okay. Yeah, and he did uh, the first Resident Evil, Mortal Kombat. Mm. He's great visually, but he's not good with story. Mm. You know, Snyder, same thing. Great visually, not good with so, story. Yeah, he's not good. So yeah yeah so um so yeah so it's good to see those those little things and um yeah yeah i i, you know. I kind of like james cameron's um what do you call it like he, his flow like because he always has a very big epic ending but like the the yeah. end the the last 30 or 40 minutes of the film is this massive battle you know and yeah. yeah, like it sucks when if you have a massive battle at the beginning of the film and then it just kind of and the last bit just doesn't live up to you know the foot the battle at the start. And like yeah, that's yeah. what I love about Cameron. He just builds up this massive, you know, epic yeah. battle that, that everyone's looking forward to at the end. And yeah. When he gets so. involved, it feels like it's a well-crafted piece. Mm. He knows what he wants from the beginning, middle act, and the end. He knows how yeah. to craft it completely. Yeah. Whereas there's some people that know that there's a beginning, middle, and end, but the crafting of it is like they mm. bypass certain parts to just try artistic things. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that, but you you have to make it all cohesive. Yeah. I think he's he's not a great writer in terms of when it comes to dialogue. I don't think he's very good at dialogue writing but he knows how to really captivate an audience and yeah, yeah. i just like yeah so cameron yeah i, I watched Fem fomento's uh episode on terminator 2 and he was just explaining or not his villain episode but he was showing a per portion of terminator 2 and how good it was the first half of the film you couldn't figure out who was the bad guy mm -hmm. And and that you couldn't figure out whether it was Arnold or whether it was this new liquid metal thing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So during the almost like the first act of the film, you couldn't figure out whether Arnold was still bad because he was bad in the first film. But you know, and I don't know if the trailers gave it away though at the time because like I saw it on VHS, so 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 I kind of knew yeah. everything beforehand. But I, I'm I'm wondering if the trailers gave it away, whether he, if he was a good if he was playing the good or the bad guy. Yeah, but I think yeah. from the trailers, I thought there were two bad guys fighting each other, mm. like and going after John Connor. But I don't remember if they showed the Sarah Connor grabbing his Arnold's hand or something. I don't quite yeah. remember. So, so that's yeah. why I love watching um, film reactions when yeah, yeah, because I've seen somewhere yeah, no, because I've seen somewhere they watched Terminator Two not knowing that Arnold was a good guy, and then when they find out, they're like, oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, but they mean uh, they must have been living under a rock. Some of those guys, because um, yeah, there's a lot of films. Like, yeah, to like miss, they love to miss those films. Yeah. Unless um, they're from Gen Z, you know, or something. They're from like yeah. Yeah, but there's some that are quite like they're in the at least they're in, in their thirties and. Yeah, so weird to miss certain movies, like yeah. But their reactions seem very genuine, you know. Genuine, so, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But it looks like I gotta head off. Um, yeah, yeah, I thought so. Awesome. But let's have less setup next time. Yeah. And more yes, talky yes, yes. talky. <laughs> well, I got it now. I got it now. I know exactly yeah. where it is. I have the marks, the marks on the ground, so I know exactly where I'm at. And awesome. Yeah. Awesome. We can do this easy peasy next time. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to Mace so Windows lightsaber. Oh, oh, blacked out. I'll do a little Spider Man just for you.
Okay, please don't use that. Oh.